Hey, come see us on tour. We'll be in Duluth, Georgia, right outside of Atlanta, Jacksonville, Florida, Tempe, Arizona, and Burbank, California. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for those tickets. This is the craziest thing. So the Atlantic, this is this isn't this is from their January, February issue. I just saw this the and I wanted to share it with you. They did a story says the great fake ch- child sex trafficking epidemic. They call it fake. Huh. Dispatches from a moral panic. That's what the subtitle is. And it's by someone named Kathleen Tiffany. That's who wrote this. The great fake child sex trafficking epidemic. So this is the, there it is. And guess who this is here? Yesterday, the Atlantic, this is from Luke Rutkowski. Yesterday, The Atlantic put out an article claiming child trafficking was a fake epidemic. Here's a photo of the owner of The Atlantic, Lauren Powell, getting cozy with, guess who? Gislaine Maxwell. That's real. And they did an article that the child trafficking epidemic is fake. And here she is. In a bathing suit, they're both in bathing suits, hanging out with Jizz Lane Maxwell. I like to call her Jizz Lane. This is real. As outrageous as these allegations were, their timing may have made them sound less fantastical to some. They coincided with the release of a popular documentary about the real sex trafficking crimes allegedly committed, allegedly committed by Jeffrey Epstein. Allegedly, the disgraced financer who was arrested in July 2019 and committed suicide that August. They just repeat that lie. Look how they look how it's being reported by Kathleen Tip. What is her name? Caitlin it is Caitlin Tiffany. This is how it's being reported by her. Allegedly committed by Jeffrey Epstein, and he then committed suicide. Not allegedly committed suicide. And who was known for his wide circle of rich and famous acquaintances. His death set off a new slew of conspiracy theories. What? Again, anything the establishment doesn't want you to know or talk about is now a conspiracy theory. Is it a theory that Jeffrey Epstein was working with the Mossad and the CIA and had a, has blackmail on everybody? Is that really a conspiracy theory? Theory or a conspiracy fact? In this context, the suddenly ubiquitous Save the Children post created the illu- hashtag Save the Children posts created the illusion of an organic movement rising up to confront a massive social pro- problem. Americans who knew little about QAnon became heavily involved. And when QAnon moved on to other concerns, a stolen election, a poisonous vaccine, like again, these people aren't outraged that they were lied to about everything about COVID. And everybody used to scream about election results up until 2020. That's when you were a crazy conspiracy theorist if you had a problem with the integrity of the United States voting system. So, and then when QAnon moved on to other concerns, a stolen election, a poisonous vaccine, these volunteers stayed devoted to the cause of opposing child sex trafficking. That's so, anyway, I, that, that, that was one of my favorite parts of the article. I wanted to share it with you. I wanted to show you what kind of garbage you find in the Atlantic. Hey, doesn't uh, Steve, who's... Who owns the Atlanta? Isn't it Steve Jobs' wife now, I think, is a major owner? Who owns the Atlantic magazine? The Atlantic announced that billionaire investor and philanthropist Laureen Powell Jobs, the widow of former Apple Incorporated chairman and CEO Steve Jobs, had acquired majority ownership through her Emerson Collective organization with a staff member of Emerson Collective, Peter Latman, being immediately named as vice chairman of the Atlantic. So 
it is Steve Jobs ex-wife or former wife it was founded in 1857 in Boston as the Atlantic Monthly uh, after ex experiencing financial hardship and undergoing several ownership changes in the late 20th century, the magazine was purchased by businessman David Bradley, who refashioned it as a general editorial magazine primarily aimed at serious national readers and thought leaders. In 2016, the periodical was named Magazine of the Year by American Society of Magazine Editors. That's how you know it's shit. In July 2017, Bradley sold a majority interest in the publication to Lauren Powell Jobs, Emerson Collective. In 2022, its writers won Pulitzer Prizes for feature writing. You know what kind of Pulitzer Prizes you get now for writing bullshit about the people at the New York Times? They won Pulitzers for writing about the conspiracy theory of Russiagate, which that's what it was a boundless, mindless, dumbest conspiracy theory of my lifetime, most easily debunked, they gave themselves Pulitzer Prizes for writing about Russiagate. So now, whenever I see somebody say that, oh, they want a Pulitzer, I'm just, I get a little suspect. It's not like when Chris Hedges won one or Glenn Greenwald for actually doing real reporting. The website's executive... So they won their Pulitzers for for general excellence. <laughs> this is the kind of excellent stuff they do. What? Oh, the Atlantic Chief's editor is Iraq War Chief. Jeffrey Goldberg is their chief editor. He was the biggest Iraq War Chief leader. Another conspiracy theory that Saddam it poses a threat to the United States and he has weapons of mass destruction. Another conspiracy theory. So their conspiracy theories are okay. It's just the other ones, you know, the ones about COVID vaccines, Jeffrey Epstein. Those are crazy conspiracy theories. The website's executive editor is Adrian LaFrance, and the editor-in-chief is Jeffrey Goldberg. He is one of the most garbage writers in the world. Jeffrey Goldberg. Of course he is. The magazine publishes 10 times a year. The magazine, if reported, has crossed 1 million subscribers and become profitable after three years prior, losing $20 million a year. Wow. Well, I've got almost 2 million subscribers. I got 2 million subscribers on social media, YouTube, Rumble, and Twitter. And Twitter. I don't even, we got kicked off of TikTok and did we get kicked off of Instagram? I know. Okay. <laughs> wow. Let's see who this Adrian LaFrance is. She received her BA in journalism. Well, there's two kinds of people who get journalism degrees. Duckers and shitty journalists. <laughs> and she got an MS in journal. She got an MS in journalism. Why would you get in master's in journalism? Why would you do that? Why would you? Why? Why wouldn't you just go do journalism? Why are you acting like you have to turn this into some kind of academic endeavor? That's not what journalism is. Why would you do that? She has served as staff writer for Neiman Journalism Lab a Harvard at Harvard University. I bet it's fantastic. And a reporter in the Washington Bureau of Honolulu Civil Beat before moving to Washington State. Additionally, she worked as a reporter and news anchor for Hawaii Public Radio, managing editor for Honolulu Weekly, and news writer for WBUR, Boston's NPR affiliate. She joined The Atlantic in 2014. Became editor of the website in 2017. That's a quick move, move up. And then she became the executive editor in 2019. Boom, boom. She must be making friends. She knows how to make friends and do all that kind of uh, business smoothing because that's what that is. That's what gets you those things. She covered technology, politics, and the media. Yeah. Her writing appeared in the New York Times, the Washington Post, Gawker, Slate, and the Owl. All the shit thing. I don't know what the Owl is. 
She was on Fresh Air in 2020, where she talked about what it's like to be a person for whom facts matter. Ha ha ha! But to be immersed in QAnon and conspiracy theories are her reporting. So like not, not conspiracy theories like the Iraq War or Russiagate. Not those kind of conspiracy theories that you were all immersed in, right? Not them. Her reporting titled Prophecies of Q was called a, a recommended read to understand the group's storytelling techniques by CNN's media reporter. She also spoke about gender imbalance in America's news media. Oh, my God. So she's a regular horrible. How about that? Hey, come see us on tour. We'll be in Duluth, Georgia, right outside of Atlanta, Jacksonville, Florida, Tempe, Arizona, and Burbank, California. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for those tickets. Mm -hmm.